Hello, I'm Adin Sir and welcome to my Brewmaster guide for patch 6.1. This guide will consist of three videos, including the basic gameplay guide, the second part in which I'll be covering talents, glyphs, macros and stuff like that, and the third will be a raid boss fight. Without further ado, let's get on to the guide. Okay, before we get started, let me just say that the Brewmasters are by far the best tanks at the moment and in my opinion the most fun so if you haven't already I would recommend that you level up your monk it's easy and fast to level up moving on to the core mechanic stagger it's a uh, passive and it basically serves the same purpose as block does for other tanks but it has the potential of being much better if played correctly now the way it works is when you receive damage uh, it's only physical damage 30% of that damage is converted into a debuff on you that it ticks every second for 10 seconds and that debuff gets stronger and stronger the more you get hit so it can be tracked uh, with the default uh, blizzard uh, stagger bar or with an add-on when the stagger bar reaches yellow it starts hitting pretty hard and if it reaches red you will eventually die so uh, that's why you have uh, a way to remove it with a spell called uh, Purifying Brew. It costs only one chi and doesn't have a cooldown. So plus it's off the global cooldown. So to effective, effectively purify Stagger, uh, you have to have one chi or enough chi to generate uh, or enough uh, energy to generate the chi through the entire fight. Another important passive or buff is Shuffle and you gain 6 seconds of it after using Blackout Kick or G Explosion. Now the buff gives an additional 10% parry chance which isn't important but what is important is it gives you 10% more stagger. So you would have 40% reduced damage by default in an ideal situation. Plus you can stack it uh, to infinity basically. Uh, and Serenity helps with that, but uh, you won't have the chance since you need the uh, Chi for your other abilities. So the three Chi generators are Jeb, Kek Smash and Expel Harm. They all uh, cost 40 energy and do pretty much the same thing. Now Jeb is the simplest one just deals a bit of damage and generates one chi. It should be used uh, while Kag Smash is off cooldown and uh, if you're in range of the bo boss because uh, it's a me melee skill. Now Kag Smash is just a more powerful wor version of Jab. It uh, deals a lot more damage, it's AoE, it uh, makes uh, picking up pads and getting aggro much easier, plus it slows them down for 50% of their uh, movement speed and the most important thing, it uh, generates 2 chi instead of 1, that's why it's used on cooldown. And the last one is Expel Harm. There are a couple of uses for it, uh, the main uh, time I use it is when I'm out of range of the boss and I need the chi badly for uh, purifying brew, but uh, using it on its own isn't really that useful, It's uh, the heal is not that good, it's better with the guard, so when you pop guard you should uh, use expel harm instead of jab. And when, uh, but uh, basically you, you use it, uh, you just keep it off cooldown and uh, use it when you're out of range of the boss so that you can generate one chi. Now since you're using jab uh, between keg smashes you shouldn't uh, waste energy on it uh, that much that you can't uh, use keg smash when it comes off cooldown so if you don't use jab basically if you're below 60 energy when keg smash is off cooldown it, uh, it isn't worth it. It might seem like it is, but it isn't. 
Not counting the talents, there are three defensive cooldowns to keep in mind. Let's start with Fortifying Brew. It is the strongest uh, cooldown you have, giving 20% more damage resistance, 20% of your maximum HP, and because of the uh, ox, that, uh, ox uh, stance, 20% more stagger. But it has a cooldown of 3 minutes. Obviously, you use it uh, when something unexpected, like the other tank dying, or he couldn't taunt off for whatever reason, and of course, when you know you can't survive a big boss ability. But in normal and heroic uh, raids, it's rare you will ever need it for that. Secondly, you have Elusive Brew, which uh, gives a bonus of 45% more dodge chance. It is a stack based spell, and the stacks are gained by critically hitting with uh, auto attacks. So it's you basically passively get the stacks. And uh, it caps at 15 stacks, and for every stack you get 1 second of the buff. Keeping it at uh, 15 for too long is a waste, since it doesn't matter how many you use, you will always get the same amount of dodge chance, and they are easily generated. So the only thinking you have to do is when to consume them. And of course, uh, it's used to avoid uh, melee and ranged hits. However, it can't guarantee your, your saf safety. It's not uh, that good of a spell, but it's still useful in some way. Now, the last uh, defensive cooldown is Guard. It is the most important one and the trickiest to use for new players. It's uh, an absorption shield, so it scales with attack power, same as your other heals. And being that it's uh, an absorb, it works great in tandem with uh, any of your other defensives. Meaning it takes reduced damage the same way you would take, uh, so it uh, stays for much longer with you taking zero damage, and it helps the healers a lot. With uh, Fortifying Brew and Guard Up, you literally can't die, and that's the reason monks are currently OP. It has, uh, two, it has two stacks, so it's best to keep it on one stack when you know you don't need two, otherwise you're just uh, wasting the healer's men. Now. As for when to use it, uh, if you're taking the bo tanking the boss first on a pull, pop uh, agility potion, and if you have uh, on use trinket uh, before the pull, and uh, use guard a little before they expire. That way you will have an insane guard buffed by uh, those uh, the potion and the trinket plus by resolve. Uh, another time to use it is dur during fights, um, uh, whenever your other, you fear that you might die because your other cooldowns are falling off and your HP drops. So it's basically a save your life saving ability. We have Legacy of the White Tiger. It it's a raid buff gives. Stats and critical strike, nothing special there. We have Detox, which is our dispel. It uh, removes poisons and disease. Uh, I haven't found much use for it uh, in the in what, but hey, you never know. Then we have our, let's say, main heal, or it replaced our healing spheres, which were a lot. Uh, more fun to use, they were unique to the monk class and uh, quite quite different from uh, every other heal in the game. And yeah, they were a bit OP, but they could have uh, nerfed it, not removed it. It's a shame. But anyway, this Surging Mist is a uh, one and a half uh, second cast, it's pretty, uh, pretty weak. 
so I haven't found much use for it maybe on occasion when you're not tanking and uh, you have the time to cast it which isn't often now I'm skipping the talents for now that will be in the next video so we have uh, spinning crane kick now to be honest I haven't uh, used it much at all really it's only useful when using Russian Jade Wind and as I said we'll talk about talents later but uh, on its own it's really not useful since you have uh, a lot of uh, better instacast uh, AoE abilities no? shame Okay, then we have a uh, summon black ox statue and this is a very very useful ability and uh, it's changed a bit since mop uh, now it uh, serves as an aoe taunt spell so you put it down and everything in 30 yards will uh, be taunted by it and uh, the threat generated by it it's it's insane i mean not insane, but uh, I think you will need uh, two or, th or three spells to get uh, mobs off it, or just taunt it with uh, provoke. So it uh, has a lot of uses in the new raid. Uh, Beast Lord, of course, to taunt the spawning adds. Uh, operator, what's his name? Then uh, uh, Plank Bender as well the wolves when they spawn you can place it where they where you want to tank them and because uh, you don't know which will be the big one you can just uh, put this and he will come then you can down him or the statue so it uh, it's easy to use as well so no you just have to remember to you have it then we have uh, Transcendence, again a pretty useful spell, you put it down, then if uh, tank the boss by it, tank tank tank, and when uh, ability comes you have to move away, just sprint away or roll away, and when you have to go back and uh, tank the boss you just return, and that's all instacast, uh, the range is 40 yards, so like any other ranged spell yes yes um, so yeah it's pretty useful then we have our kick uh, nothing really special here it's just uh, interrupt then nimble brew now this is basically your second trinket or first if you're not a human it removes uh, Fear, stun, root, horror effects. The only thing uh, it, uh, it doesn't remove is incapacitate, I think. Yeah, so saps and uh, stuff like that. But uh, in raiding, I don't think. Uh, I don't. Uh, haven't noticed uh, in what that uh, bosses CC'd me a lot. But. It's it's nice to have on the bars just to for as a precaution. Moving on to death, touch of death. Now I have been abusing the shit out of this spell on on a lot of boss fights. It's uh, really awesome. Uh, let's see, on Beast Lord you can uh, uh, touch of death the beast. He's on. It does a lot of damage since. It does the t uh, either it does all of your health if uh, the target is ten at ten percent or below, or if he has less health than you. So uh, I would deal 347 uh, k plus with buffs like uh, fortifying brew or. If you have a trinket on use that gives stamina, you can hit pretty hard. And if you're using a flask of uh, stamina, which you should, uh, flask of agility is better. But yeah, 
you can abuse it uh, for instance there uh, the wolf uh, again you can touch of that then as an operated Torgar well any boss really a blast furnace Gromog uh, the hands of Gromog that's uh, pretty useful and stuff like that it's plus I use uh, the glyph so I don't waste three then we have our well Tiger's Lust is a talent but it's a mandatory talent so it's just a sprint that you can give yourself for a friendly player. Then we have Paralysis, it's um, our main uh, CC. So just on trash or when in instances or wherever it saps a mob for one minute or a player for five seconds. Now Zen Meditation is an ability that, at least in my experience, I haven't uh, seen monks use it, but uh, it's an under underused spell a lot. But uh, what it does is reduce your damage by 90% for 8 seconds, but you have to keep standing and not take any physical damage or melee attack. So. There are uses for it when you are not tanking, so the other tank is tanking and there is a AoE ability that is coming or a cleave ability or you have a lot of stacks uh, that you picked up while you were tanking and you just need to soak the damage and survive. That's... Uh, and for soaking as well, yeah, so... It's a really useful ability, the cooldown is long but... Yeah, so once or twice in the fight you can use, you can use it. Then we have our Tiger Palm, it's uh, basically a filler. It does a bit of damage and uh, ignores 30% of uh, armor for 20 seconds or 25 if you stack it. But uh, it's not a priority by any means, like I said it's filler and uh, if you don't have it, it's no, it's no big deal, it's just uh, bonus damage, nothing else. Then we have uh, Breath of Fire, which is a pure DPS spell, so for tanking it doesn't help, help you at all in raiding. There is a use for it uh, if you're soloing stuff or going to dungeons, so... Uh, if you're using the Breath of Fire Glyph, you can, uh, when you use it, uh, Breath of Fire, you can, uh, all the enemies are disoriented for 3 seconds, but uh, that's really not useful in raiding, so you won't be taking that glyph. So it's the only time you, you use it in raiding, it's when there isn't. Uh, anything special going on in the fight and you know you can survive no problem and just uh, to put some more DPS out there it's nice DPS it uh, deals initial damage then uh, double that damage over 8 seconds so it's not bad but again never use it unless you are perfectly safe and even then consider not using it and then we have Dizzing Haze, which is the same as in MOP, at least the, it fu functions the same, but uh, generating threat with it is uh, a lot, uh, how should I say, a lot less viable, because uh, if you generate threat with it uh, without uh, attacking the mob or boss or whatever it the boss will attack wh whoever attacks it first so let's say you're you're just uh, taunting the boss with this uh, without using anything else whoever attacks it with just one spell gets the aggro so uh, the only way to use it really is 
if you have your ox or with uh, or to attack with any ranged attack or so if they're far away and then use uh, this in case so again it's not as useful as uh, in mop but I don't know it, it's useful in the way that uh, what it's enabled like it I can't tell you, no. that it uh, slows the enemies it's the threat generated is low then we have our taunt, nothing special there, unless uh, of course you didn't know that uh, it, the mob moves 50% uh, uh, faster towards you when you do it, so something good to, to keep in mind. Then we have our, our roll, which uh, is for, of course for avoiding shit and it synergizes well with uh, transcendence. So, let's troll out all the way and go back. But be sure when you go back, just uh, put uh, another transcendence down. So, if the, it's that kind of a fight. But, yeah. And finally, we have our purifying brew, which we already mentioned. It just uh, purifies your stagger. Nothing special there. Okay, I think. Oh, yeah. And Zen Pilgrimage. This is basically what uh, Paladins have. Uh, they bubble and then they uh, hardstone. But this is better since uh, you're a tank so you don't take much damage and you can uh, not just uh, let the other tank get aggro or let your ox get aggro and just roll out of the way. Zen Pilgrimage. If it's a wipe, this is only if it's a wipe, so you cast it for 10 seconds, you go into your uh, peak of serenity, and the old rate is dead, but you're alive, and the best uh, part and is... And the best part is, when you click on it again, it takes you right back to the raid, without wasting gold for repairs, or wasting time, if you use the hardstone. That should cover all the basics and I'll see you in the next video.